very much for giving us the opportunity to present our solution. So um, together with uh, Simon, Etienne, and Valentina, we'll present uh, the, the first place solution. Um, just moving quickly to, to the introductions, uh, and I let uh, the, the, the other people in the team present themselves. Hello, I'm Etienne Andrier. I'm a gap year student from Central Supelec, and I was a, a data scientist intern at Okin until uh, the uh, beginning of March. Uh, and I will uh, return to my uh, uh, engineering school in uh, September to finish my studies. I'm Valentina Dutroietto. I have a background in pure mathematics. And uh, since uh, two years, I am data scientist at Pokin. Hi, everyone. So I'm Simon, previously team lead at Pokin, and I'm now working as a, a senior data scientist at NVIDIA. And I'm Jean-Baptiste Chirati. I have a training in mathematics, a PhD in applied mathematics in neurosciences. And I'm now, now the, the medical imaging team lead at Hawking uh, and also lead research scientist at Hawking. Uh, and so we, we are happy to, to present you our, our, our solution. So um, going quickly on that, so the, the goal was to identify the five most common subtypes of ovarian cancers uh, and also outliers, uh, either rare variants or normal cases at inference. Um, so uh, this is a, a, a small plot showing uh, the, the performance of our solutions uh, with time, um, only the public scores. And uh, before the, the final deadline, we selected two submissions, uh, the one we were most confident in. So the first submission was an ensembling of five different uh, types of architectures. So there were five uh, deep mill or AB mill, uh, five choders and five uh, DS mill models together with five min pools trained on top of different feature extractors. Uh, and there was a second submission that was selected. It was an ensembling of 65 children models on top of FICON. And it turns out that uh, the, the second submission scored best. So indeed, uh, the second submission scored 66, 0 0.66 on the private leaderboard. And there was a submission which was not selected, which called uh, 0 0.68 on the private leaderboard. But today, uh, we will present you the, the, the submission, uh, so the ensembling of 65 shoulder models on top of FICON, which scored uh, 0 0.66 on the private leaderboard. So it consists of different steps that are summarized here. Um, first, uh, the ingestion of the data. So uh, we work with either whole slide images or TMAs as PNG files. Uh, if an image is a TMA, uh, then um, we will uh, sample patches a little bit differently than for whole slide images. Uh, at inference, we detect if uh, an image is a TMA or not using features from a frozen ResNet 18, uh, on top of which we apply a logistic regression. And in any case, we extract uh, patches from those images. So the patches will be uh, 224 by 224 pixel patches for whole slide images. And there will be two times bigger patches for TMAs. And then those patches will be uh, downsized uh, to 224 by 224 pixels uh, for TMAs. So in any case, uh, so after matter detection and tiling, we end up with 224 by 224 patches that go into uh, the FICON feature extractor. And so this FICON feature extractor, it's uh, the, the foundation model for digital pathology that has been uh, open sourced by Hawking a uh, few months ago. And this feature extractor is used to compute uh, representations or embeddings of uh, those patches. And then those embeddings are used as input uh, to the uh, multiple instance learning algor algorithm that is uh, Choder. And so this uh, Choder algorithm uh, has been used to predict either uh, the five different classes of ovarian cancer are also uh, the other uh, subtypes uh, using high entropy prediction. And we go uh, a bit more into details afterwards. So as I mentioned, uh, one of the first step in our pipeline is to be able to detect uh, the parts of the image that actually contain matter, not background. And so to do that, we used a, a method called old switch thresholding in the uh, HS HSV color space. Uh, turns out that it worked quite well. Uh, it might not work that well for other types of 
uh, staining. So for instance, uh, IHC stainings, but uh, for the images in the competition, uh, we were quite satisfied with the metal detection, as you can see, uh, for instance, here. So the second step, as I mentioned, uh, consists in splitting the images into patches, because as the other uh, participants have noticed, so the images are too big, so they cannot be analyzed using standard computer vision techniques. So uh, it's a, it's a well-known technique or uh, a well-known workaround to split those very large images into uh, bags of, uh, of patches. And so as a reminder, there were those two types of images. So either the whole slide images at 20x magnification or the TMAs at 40x. And so we made the, the following hypothesis. We hypothesized that uh, given the low number of TMAs in the data set, so only 25, uh, it would be best to standardize all the patches to the 20x magnification. So meaning that we will take larger patches from the TMAs and we will resize them to make them look like patches from whole slide images. And you can see an example at the bottom of the slide here. The goal is to resize patches from the TMAs to make them look like uh, patches from whole slide images. And you can see that uh, roughly in the two patches, the cells have more or less uh, the same size. Uh, and then, uh, depending on whether we worked uh, locally and whether we worked in a notebook uh, on the Kaggle platform for a submission, we had different ways of working. So locally, uh, we would do, uh, as I said, for the tiling, and we would take almost all the, the, the tiles available. So on average, uh, 12,000 tiles per image. So that's a lot. Uh, and so the, the, the compute and the, and the hardware was not a problem. But uh, as, as other participants and other winners have, uh, have noticed, uh, the hardware and the time constraint were quite a, a challenge in this competition. So um, to adapt to those challenges, so we used only 200 tiles uh, per image uh, in inference, meaning that uh, we only took a very small subset of all the possible patches uh, to do the inference uh, in our notebook. And in any case, uh, either locally on or on the Kaggle notebook, uh, we used a Ray, so uh, an open source Python library to parallelize uh, the preprocessing and to make it more efficient. Uh, so that was also something that was key for us, uh, being able to process multiple images at the same time uh, on uh, one or two GPUs. As I said, the next step, the feature extraction, was done using a model uh, called FICON. It's uh, it's uh, so something that we would call a, a, digi a foundation model for digital pathology, uh, meaning that it's a large vision model. So it's a vi vision transformer uh, that has been uh, pre-trained on uh, whole slide images from the TCGA database, so the, the Cancer Genome Atlas database. Um, and so we compared uh, this uh, feature extractor to other feature extractors, so for instance, C-Transpass or Linit. And in our experiments, uh, in cross-validation locally, uh, FICON worked best uh, by far uh, as compared to C-Transpass or Linit. So FICON was really uh, the one we, we, we wanted to, to move forward with. And I let uh, Etienne take over to, to, to tell you about how we trained uh, those models. So uh, I'll stop sharing and let Etienne uh, share again. Sorry, I had to. Ah, I'm sorry, uh, I have to modify my settings. So I have to quit and uh, join back. I'll be back. The classic one. <laughs> Then we can't hear you. Ah. 
sorry, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, um, so sorry, uh, about training. Uh, we perform cross-validation uh, on five folds uh, with three repetitions of these five folds. Uh, each repetition differed from the others um, uh, on uh, the number of TMAs that we included in the test set. And we divided the training and validation data into validation for 25% and training for 75%. And we used the validation data uh, to perform early stopping based on the balanced accuracy score. Um, so we used the ADAM uh, optimizer with uh, weight decay and the cross entropy loss. Um, and our metric was uh, for validation and test the balanced accuracy. And we performed uh, early stopping with a patience of four epochs um, and with a maximum of 30 epochs. Um, now the, the data set was quite imbalanced. Um, so we had to, to uh, mitigate uh, this, this imbalance. We used uh, weighted sampling uh, for uh, balanced uh, batches and um, class weights uh, for the cross entropy loss. Uh, the chowder uh, model is quite sensitive uh, to the way we initialize uh, its weights. And so to mitigate this effect, uh, we initialized for each uh, fold of each repetition, 50 chowders, uh, which all had the same uh, parameters. Uh, and uh, we noticed that by doing so, um, the, the score uh, of the ensemble of these 50 chowders, which we call model ensemble, um, was um, uh, uh, the, the, the score um, uh, uh, evolution uh, with respect to the number of epochs was uh, satisfactory uh, and very uh, smooth. Um, we did perform some uh, hyperparameter tuning uh, to devise what were the, the best uh, batch size parameters, learning rate, uh, the number of epochs, um, the optimizer, uh, etc. Uh, and we uh, we did this during the using the the ray tune uh, library. Uh, but we noticed that uh, the locally the the cross validation uh, scores uh, were improved. But um, the uh, leaderboard score uh, was uh, decreasing. Uh, so we might have uh, been overfitting the train set uh, in, a, in, in a certain way with uh, hyperparameter tuning. Um, and so, as I said, we divided our, um, our training uh, set into validation, train, and test. Uh, and we used the validation set uh, for early stopping, but we also used it to calibrate the model logits because um, we saw that from one um, model ensemble to the other, uh, there was a, a lot of variation in the range of the logits. And so we trained for each, um, for each uh, model ensemble of each fold and repetition a, uh, um, a, a logistic reg regression um, to match the uh, targets uh, in each uh, validation sets. Um, and then uh, we, we were left with 750 uh, chowder models, uh, and we had to devise a, a way uh, of uh, assembling them that would maximize the score in uh, uh, the, the public leaderboard. Um, and so to do so, uh, we, uh, we could uh, obviously first choose to uh, do a model ensemble of all of these models and uh, submit uh, this solution, uh, which works because uh, in our public uh, leaderboard, we had a, a 0 0.62 uh, balanced accuracy score. Uh, and uh, and then we we uh, we learned that this uh, solution had a, a 0 0.66 uh, balanced accuracy score in the private leaderboard, uh, but uh, these performances were um, um, uh, inferior to what we had uh, 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 done also by filtering the the models. So uh, what we did 
was we ranked uh, the Chowder models uh, in each uh, in each validation sets, um, and then we selected the top models for each of these. Um, so as you can see, we ranked them using the validation score, balanced accuracy score, uh, and then uh, what we can see is that uh, if we choose uh, a certain number uh, of uh, chowders, uh, we will not necessarily uh, get the best performances with the most uh, models. So with 10 to 20 chowder models, we get the same approximately the same performance as with uh, 50. Um, and then uh, from that, we use the public leaderboard to to choose the the combinations of uh, repetition and fold uh, indexes. Um, and it was kind of the only way we had uh, to 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 choose um, uh, and filter our model ensembles. Uh, so through test uh, trial and error, uh, uh, we, we we chose uh, uh, three uh, model ensembles uh, for our use, uh, winning solution, uh, but our best uh, submission had uh, four of them. Now we'll give the the mic to uh, to Simon. Yes, so to identify outliers we used samples for which the model was not confident so it was really important to uh, spend time on this because the other category was worth one sixth of the total score because the metric was balanced accuracy so what we first tried is uh, to use the maximum of the five predictions as a way to measure how uncertain the model is. So if your maximum prediction is, let's say, lower than 40%, you are quite uncertain. Uh, so we tried this with several fresh thresholds. So the difficulty is that you don't have other uh, samples, so you have to try with the leaderboard. Uh, and then we tried alternatives. So we tried uh, LP norm on the five logits. But what worked best, and it makes sense, is entropy uh, over the five different uh, classification uh, uh, probabilities. And we fine tune the threshold on the leaderboard directly. Like we tried uh, like five values and kept the best. One other idea that worked a bit, but not on the public leaderboard, so we get uh, good results on the private, but not on the public is to use the variance of the different prediction across the models of the ensemble. So if you have one model that say one thing and the other one say something completely different, it means that your ensemble is not that confident. And I think that's it. And maybe Etienne, don't keep sharing your screen. Uh, we have some uh, other slides if uh, questions are related to it. Thank you.